this is AG Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Bravely Default! Let's head to the Kustra Archipelago, or whatever that area that, uh, what was it, DeRoso was telling us to go to. So, the closest location would be Florham, the Wither Woods, and go to the place where we found Susano O before. Although I suppose the Temple of Wind would be pretty close too. But yeah, now we got this hole here that leads into the Cleft of Dimension. I, I mean, uh, Dimension's Hasp. So yeah, this was formerly sealed by Juliana with all the weapons that were seized from, yeah, the Orthodoxy there. And yeah, there's like, er there's like 10 floors to this place including this one, so there's actually nine, and each of them has like ten enemies from other areas in the game. They're just more powerful. And, as you can see, yeah, we can't teleport out of here. So, yeah, it's a pretty long dungeon, actually. But since most, or if not all, of the enemies are, you know, basically just the same as before, but more powerful, I'm only going to show a few of the interesting battles, or interesting enemies. Or a battle where I have to deal with adversity, eventually. First floor is pretty sh quick and easy, though, but yeah, as you can see... Uh-oh. Whoa! Six of them?! I didn't even get to see my menu! Well then. Okay, let's try this one again. <laughs> now, most battles will not be that ridiculous. I just got horrifically unlucky there. Holy cow. Well, I guess it's better to get unlucky early in the dungeon than later in the dungeon. Holy cow! And they've got some pretty good treasure here, which is why I wanted to go through this place now. And, like, like you can see, the map is the same as a floor of a dungeon from earlier in the game. They just have the treasures, and, and fr they just have different treasures and completely different enemies. But, I mean, the enemies are just slightly buffed. They're not really that much harder. Usually, what I do to get through most battles is use Godspeed Strike with Tiz. If there's only three, or two or three enemies, he should be able to take them all out by himself. But if I run into a large group of enemies, like that one that ambushed me there, I would use, like, Energy Burst and a Crescent Moon. Any group with a sufficiently large number of enemies, those enemies have relatively low HP, and I can easily wipe them all out pretty quickly there. Agnes is going to see some action, too, in this dungeon, because there's a few enemies that have, like, really high defense, but they're weak to a particular element. So that's why I've got Pierce Magic defense on her. And here we get one of my favorite weapons in the game, the Earthbreaker, the Ultimate Axe. Oh! Uh, oh, no. Ow! Ow! Well... Now, normally I would run from a battle that started that badly, but you can't run from the battles in the dungeon either, I don't think. At least, flee doesn't work here. So, yeah, we're gonna have to try and cut this one out. Let's see, well... Now, I do have a rise. I could use that, and I think one of them is in negative BP from that attack they use. Yeah, there it is. So, Tiz can definitely take that one. But the other guy, maybe, maybe not. Well, I mean, we got the damage, at least. I was concerned that guy might default, because they, they usually like to do that. Well, I can't do anything more with Tiz, 
but at least we got the other two. So let's see if I go. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think I'm thinking I want to use uh. What was that? Yeah. Let's revive Anya. Then we'll use pressure points. And in the event that it does default, I can use Chigan Wave to help finish the guy off. Because I already got some damage in there. Otherwise, I would normally wait, or I would default myself, until one of them defaults up to 1 BP. And then I can take them out when I know they're not going to default there. Well, fortunately, I've got plenty of Turbo Ether, so I can use Arise as much as the need arises, I suppose. Let's see, by the way, with that Earthbreaker Axe there, that is the ultimate axe in the game. It's the most powerful one. And, as the name would imply, it's Earth Elemental. Not again. Can I go one battle without being ambushed? And killed immediately? Okay. Okay, let's try again. I could use Rampart there, but since I think most of the enemies are just going to target ring bell or Anya's there, then just defaulting with ring bell should be good enough. Or maybe not. not. Okay, so with these guys, hmm. I mean, I could kill them all with Tiz, but Tiz would act before the others. So, let's see. Yeah, let's do this with Ring of Bell. Since I do have one extra BP now, yeah, we can go with Phoenix Down, Double Energy Burst, and that should be good enough. Yeah, otherwise, I could have used three Godspeed Strikes with Tiz, but then Anyas would remain dead, and I want to keep my experience as even as possible. Hey, hey, another Wonder Rod. Although, we're going to get better stuff eventually. But, yeah, let's, uh, heal up from there, and, yeah, let's use a couple of those Turbo Eaters. Holy cow. Now, by the way, with the Earthbreaker, there will be, there will come a time where I do want to use that, especially with the Gaia gear that I have equipped on ring -Bell there right now. But I want to... I don't want to use it right now, because on most of the floors of this dungeon, there's quite a few enemies that are resistant to Earth Elemental attacks, like they're flying or whatever. So I don't want to have to switch that in and out with the Foxtail, because of the agility that I get out of it. That's more valuable. But here we got the ultimate rod in the game. The demon rod there. And, well, I don't really care about its passive ability. I, I'm i really only interested in it for the raw magic attack stat that it has. That's all. Eh, another brave suit. I might use that at some point. Could be useful for ring a bell or idea there, maybe. I mean, I, I could get in, like, another, like, a Phoenix Down or another Arise from Agnes there. I'm not going to use it right now, but I'll use it later, eventually. By the way, I have Dungeon Master equipped on Tiz, so that's why I'm able to go through this area so quickly and easily without having to worry about terrain damage or any or status ailments or anything like that but there we get the ultimate bow in the game so i mean i'm not going to use it but it's there and that's artemis's bow not artemia's bow although she was probably named after artemis or something like that but all right Okay, so I want to change up my equipment a little bit here. So let's see. Let's go with, with the Hermes sandals on Agnes so that I can give the Hermes shoes to 
ring a bell. So that way, on this floor, there's no enemies that are resistant to Earth. So I can equip the Earthbreaker, and I'll deal a lot more damage because I got the Gaia gear equipped. Then, let's see. Well, you know, actually, how much do we got? Yeah, you know what? Let's actually get the shoes back on Anya. So I'm going to need her to be pretty fast on this floor. And I think with the red cap and the Hermes sandals, ring a bell will still be fast enough without the foxtail there. But on this floor, I definitely want to have as much lightning boosting equipment as I can get. So I definitely want the Lambent hat equipped on Anyas there, and if and when I run into the appropriate enemies, I'll equip the Ogre's Clubs on her. Yeah, there's one particular enemy on this floor that would be really, really difficult to kill without lightning damage. Uh-oh, and there it is now! The Guardian! Oh, well, thank you for doing something useless in this round. But yeah, the Guardian there, that's pretty much a carbon copy of the boss that we fought back at Eternia in Chapter 4. I think the stats are identical between the two of them. And this week to Thunder! So, yeah, I want to equip those two Ogres Clubs on Anya's the, the passive ability to boost the lightning damage outweighs the magic attack stat of any rod, really. So, yeah, we'll just go with that. Triple, or not triple rod, quadruple Fandaga on the Guardian there. And let's see. Well, you know, the other guy, even though it's floating there, I mean, it's not strong against Earth Elemental attacks, so let's have ring a bell just use Earthquake, because I'm going to do that anyway, and then I'll have Tiz use all of his Godspeed Strikes on the Guardian. So hopefully we'll be able to take it out. It does have a lot of HP, so it's pretty difficult to deal with in, or with a regular random battle setup without like a specific setup just for the boss, like the four. But I think everyone should be able to hit at or near max damage. Yeah, it's got over 120,000 HP in hard mode here. Holy cow! Uh-oh. I'm not dealing good damage. Well, thank you for not doing anything threatening for... Oh, come on! I almost had the guy! But yeah, thanks for doing nothing threatening for a few rounds while I was in negative BP. That could have been really, really bad. But, well, I got lucky there. Especially with that ambush, too. Holy cow, that guy can hit you really hard. Fortunately, it's just the one guy, though. Uh-oh. Can I go one battle without an ambush on this floor? Well, then. Let's see. The silence affects... Uh, genomes? I don't think so. Yeah, it's not considered magical. They're more like physical attacks. So, yeah, we should be good there. If I weren't, then I would... Uh, what was it? Well, whatever. We got him. But yeah, if, uh... Yeah, if I couldn't have used the genomes, well, I would have had to cure some of those status ailments. I've got, if not max, almost a max number of remedies. And one thing you can do if you were in a situation where you were silenced, but you still wanted to cast a spell that round, you could still cure the status ailment and select the spell you want to cast in advance, even though you normally would be blocked from using that. 
let's see, what was that chest? It had, like, a katana. I think that was the ultimate katana in the game. Yeah, whenever you see a chest that's... Or, well, whenever you see a blue chest, it has the ultimate version of the equipment inside. Or rather, this dungeon is kind of, like, the, has the more ultimate than ultimate equipment. But all right, okay, we're done with that floor. I don't want to use the Earthbreaker here because some enemies are resistant to it. So yeah, let's just go back to the way we had everything before. Let's see, yeah, I almost went for the deep, or the Wonder Rod, but no, that wouldn't be right. Now on this floor, well, Guess what element the enemies use against you here is? If you say water, I'm gonna hit you. No, no, it's fire. That's why I've got the ice flame shield. Not for the water immunity. No, no, just the fire damage. And let's see, just like when we came to the underflow, well, the real dungeon. Yeah, if you go the wrong way, some of the floor will collapse out in front of you. Hey, all right. That one's actually pretty good. It's not 50% MP reduction, but still 25%. That's pretty good. I'm not going to use it right now, but it could be useful. Yeah, you might as well hold on to that gold hair pin for later. Why not? But for now, I need more speed out of Anya's there, so the red cap will have to do. It's almost not worth switching her to the Lambent hat when I need extra thunder damage. But it's such a huge boost, the 25%. That's hard to beat. I mean, outside of the... What is it? The Gaia gear and the Luminous robe and all that stuff. And Lambent, Lambent had his second best. So, or, well, third best, I suppose. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I just want to clear out the map there. And then we'll head up here for another treasure. Hey, another Luminous robe. That might be useful, or, well, that might have been useful against the Gigas Lich. But no, I didn't have it then. Yeah, sometimes I might need multiple light elemental attackers. Too bad there's no genome that does light elemental damage. And here we get the ultimate knuckles in the game, the Kaiser knuckles. No elements, but it's really, really strong. I'm not going to equip that on Adia right now, but you should hold on to it for later. At this point, I've got her on natural talent because I don't need her to be that fast in this dungeon. Although she's fast enough, but still, she's better off with natural talent than the Kaiser Knuckles. But alright, on this floor, there's nothing that is resistant to Earth, so let's go with... Yeah, some speed boosting there, and then equip a much more powerful Earthbreaker. So that way we can use that with the Gaia gear on this floor. Uh-oh, well here's the other dangerous enemy around here. Oh, that is if they didn't run away when they ambushed me. Thanks, I guess. Oh, I think I forgot to equip the Lambent Hat on Anyas there. Whoops. Well, the two Ogres Clubs will have to be Now, one thing about the Guzzlers, just like all their cousins, if you hit them with a single targeting physical attack, they will counterattack with that attack that they just used on Tiz there. And yeah, hits you for massive damage and a lot of status ailments you gotta deal with. Holy cow! I did get lucky not having to deal with all three of them, but still. Actually, in a way, that was kind of a detriment only having the one there. Because even if I used Energy Burst or Crescent Moon on them, 
since there was only one of them left, I, they would still be able to counterattack, even though those attacks are mu generally multi-targeting. But if you're only... Okay, did I? Okay, good, good. For a second there, I think... I forgot if I equipped the Lambent Hat there, but... Okay, let's show how this battle is supposed to go. So, with Anyas, let's go with Quadruple Fandaga on all of them. And then let's get a couple energy bursts. As long as it hits multiple enemies, they won't be able to counterattack that. As a matter of fact, this battle is exactly where I first learned that. Because I accidentally used energy bursts on them. And I was like, oh crap, I just used a physical attack. They're going to counter me. And they didn't. I was like... Wait, what, what? Why didn't they counterattack me? And it took me a moment to realize that, uh, yeah, I hit multiple enemies, so they couldn't counterattack that. So that's where I learned that physical counterattacks only work if they're single targeting. I was thinking maybe the counterattacks had, like, some random factor to it. Like, maybe they don't always counter your physical attacks. But, no, no, they they do, always. And there we get the Gungnir, which is about as useful as in the game of its namesake. I'm not going to use it, but it is the ultimate spear in, in this game. Unfortunately, I'm not using the Valkyrie job class outside of, like, the Crescent Moon, but... Oh, well. And there we get the ult- well, maybe not the ultimate shield in the game, but one of the ultimate shields in the game. The Aegis Shield. Let's see. Oh, that makes you immune to dread or fear. Huh, I didn't know that. Or at least I forgot about it. I usually just use it for the raw evasion. Kind of strange that it makes you immune to dread instead of, like, petrification or something. And there's the last treasure we can get around here. The Brave Suit. Now, there is one more floor to this dungeon. But, yeah, if you go to this dungeon when there's... Or during the finale by shattering one of the crystals, that door will be locked. We will be able to open it later, but we can't do it in this chapter. And, yeah, as you can see, the teleport stones don't work. So we're going to have to actually walk all the way out of here. You could disable the encounter rate, but I do want to get the experience and get a couple more levels. But what awaits us in the Dark Aurora, where Eri ran off to? Find out next time on Let's Play Bravely to Fall. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.